Hello and welcome to this video on sternocloid mastoid. So the first thing I'm going to explain to you is how to very quickly investigate yourself uh, to uh, judge whether this is a problem for you or not. So you, first you have to find the sternocloid mastoid. It goes from behind the ear here uh, to your collarbone. So if you turn your head, um, you might be able to feel it tightens up. So you grab it like this and then you start squeezing various places in the sternocloid mastoid and if, it, uh, if you feel uh, a pain radiating out uh, into your head, maybe to the, the, the face of, uh, of your head, the front of your head, the back of your head, if that happens when you squeeze it, that means you've got trigger points in sternocloid mastoid and they need to be massaged away. So as a whiplash patient or anybody else who suffers from chronic pain, uh, especially in the head, um, trigger points and sore sternocloid mastoids are unforgivable and uh, uh, is not an option. All right, so next we're going to talk about some of the symptoms that uh, trigger points in the sternocloid mastoid can give you. Um, firstly, you will have a lot of a lot of headaches. So you can have a headache in the in the forehead. You will have headaches in on the top of your head. You'll have headaches in the back of your head. Um, and you can also experience uh, some um, some pain in, in in the upper part of the back of your neck. And then you will you can experience uh, pain in your eyes. So many people experience this particular pain as something behind the eye, as if something is pulling, uh, and you need to like stretch out your eye. Um, other people um, can experience um, pain in the ears. So you will have uh, well, yeah, pain in the ears. And then you can experience tinnitus, which can be both a hissing noise or a ringing sound and um, then there are some uh, some uh, some trouble or many people experience pr trouble with balance and with nausea and with dizziness so for me um, I had a lot of uh, balance or coordination problems um, for example I used to um, drop things um, for no particular reason either if I grabbed them I would I wouldn't be grabbing uh, tightly enough or I would be holding something and all of a sudden it would just drop from my hand. So this is uh, connected to uh, nausea, balance problems and um, and um, and dizziness. dizziness. <clears throat> and then there's this thing with those uh, trigger points in sternocloid mastoid that I call living in jelly. So really, the 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 um, perception is that you have a big ball of jelly on your head, or cotton ball. Other people call it to have cotton balls in your head. So your head just—it's a mixture of feeling tired, and it's uh, it's it's as if your world only really exists within one meter around you, and all kinds of impressions, that being sound or visual impressions or. You, even social um, impressions will just not really get to you. So you, you just have this express, uh, Im impression of living through, uh, experiencing the world through, well, jelly. Um, so the next thing is uh, se a sensitivity to sound. So you might be, uh, um, you might be wanting to wear earplugs or some other um, uh, sound protection gear, and you can also have a an an an, an oversensitivity to light. So many people are quite dependent on sunglasses. Um, then you can have an irritation of the nose and you can have an irritation of the eyes and this is not so much a pain it's it's rather a sensation that you have something either in your eye or in your nose it could be um, compared to hay, hay fever symptoms where you th where it feels like you have something uh, in your eyes or in your nose and um, then you have uh, finally uh, an inability to focus on text 
So when you're reading, uh, you, your eyes cannot really uh, put the two pictures together. So you have to uh, you have to really um, tighten your eye muscles to 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 make this work. There are two other very important sternocloid mastoid um, symptoms, and those two are pain in the jaw and pain in the teeth. Um, so many people will experience these uh, pain symptoms and um, if you go visit a massage therapist they will um, instantly want to massage you where the pain hurts. But that is a misunderstanding of uh, how trigger points and, 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 and radiating muscle pain works. So uh, 9 out of 10 times the problem really lies in the sternocloid mastoid. So you should not start massaging any jaw or, or, or any muscles in this area until you have um, uh, cleared out the sternocloid mastoid. So two important sternocloid mastoid symptoms, pain in the teeth and pain in the jaw. Okay, so next we're going to talk about how to actually find the sternocloid mastoid and how to treat it. So, firstly you need to be able to find it. And the sternocloid mastoid is a roll of muscle and it attaches between your, um, the, 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 behind your ear, which is a little piece of bone um, called the mastoid process. So it attaches here and then it actually goes and it splits up into two pieces of separate pieces of muscle and one of them attach here and the other one attach here so if you if you pull your head sideways while while um, tensing uh, your muscles you you will might be able to feel that it uh, it um, it tenses up here and you can uh, and you can find it for some people it's very obvious and it's very visible on the side of the neck and for other people um, they have to dig a little bit deeper so when I when I do like this uh, I have actually uh, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it right now and my hands or my fingertips are almost touching behind it but most people especially if you um, if you are um, sternocloid master is very is very tight um, most people won't be able to get their fingers behind it but you should try anyways um, but be careful that you're not only grabbing skin um, if you're only grabbing skin you are not getting anything out of it so you need to find it and uh, and and um, another way another good indicator of whether you found it is if it uh, hurts a lot and if you feel the pain in your in your face or in your in the back of your head, so um, the way to treat it is by um, finding a trigger point and pressing on that trigger point and um, holding the pressure for 45 seconds. That's really how you treat it. So you find a trigger point, hold it for 45 seconds. 45 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute. It's uh, it's it's up to you. But in the beginning, 45 seconds would be would be good. So um, some people think or uh, advise that you should or recommend that you should um, milk the trigger point instead. So you would be milking it milking it like this as opposed to pressing it. But I find that uh, milking it is too difficult because. Um, once you've found it, you kind of don't really want to let go. And also trigger points, they can uh, pop out between your fingers. So if you start milking it, you will just you will feel like it, it disappears again. Um, so I think it's easier to press it and it's, uh, it's, it's perfectly all right to press it. Uh, but you will see some places in the literature that you have to milk it. So if you want to do some sort of mix between the two, that would be fine. Um, then the next question is how hard you should press it. Um, the, quick qu the quick answer is that in the beginning on a scale of 0 to 10 where 10 is uh, excruciating pain and 0 is no pain, in the beginning you should, you should press so hard that you get to a 2. Then once you get a little bit more accustomed to it you should get to 5 and then maybe 7. Um, but the reason you should start at 2 in the beginning is because many, many people, they, um, they get so excited about having found this and then their logical uh, reasoning is, well, 
I'm, I'm not gonna follow the massage instructions, I'm just gonna give it all I can and then they're gonna press a, very very hard expecting it to uh, be more um, uh, productive or get a better effect. But really all you are going to get from that is an increase in your symptoms for maybe three to four days. Um, and then um, when you've had that experience because you really hurt a lot and you feel very, very bad uh, afterwards if you've pressed uh, much too hard, then many people give up and say, oh, uh, trigger points and self-massage is not for me. That was uh, a very uh, uncomfortable um, um, experience. But what you've actually just experienced is that there is a very, very, very close connection between your muscle here and your general uh, conditions. So the right conclusion from such an experience is, well, thank, thank God or um, celebrate that you've uh, finally found um, something which seems to be very much involved in your condition. So if you press here too hard, and you have an increased uh, um, experience of your symptoms, well then there is a connection between this and your condition. Um, so if you, if you press too hard, it's very important that you relax, and you relax your muscles, just get back to normal uh, for uh, uh, during those four, four days, and then you start again. But this time only go to two. Then when you've uh, comfortably been able to massage uh, your muscle, not increasing the pain level of more than two, when you've been able to do that for a few days, um, then you can slightly start to increase the, the pressure, but um, still be aware of not uh, pressing too hard. In, in regards to pressing, it's not so much how hard you press, so it's not a two, it's how much pain you feel when you press. So some people, if their muscle is very, very sore, they shouldn't press with more than 50 grams, so it's barely touching. And some people, uh, to get to a two, need to press with maybe one kilos, kilograms of pressure. So, so quite, quite hard. But it's not, it's not how hard you press, it's how much pain you feel. So the pain should be at about a two. So it should be very comfortable and very, very mild pain. And if you see yourself uh, doing face, uh, grimace your face like this um, that means you are pressing much 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 too hard one thing which is important to um, note is that when you press a trigger point it doesn't necessarily have to radiate out it is sufficient uh, if it is simply just um, sore so if it is sore it's a trigger point but the, the the thing about radiating out or experiencing the pain in another place is just that if you can if you have to choose between two trigger points which are quite quite uh, close to each other you should go for the one which is both sore and radiates pain or uh, where the pain is also experienced uh, elsewhere um, in the face, in the jaw, in, um, in, in other places. So you should actually continue massaging for, a, for as long as you, until you don't have any more sore trigger points. So um, the first thing you will experience when you start massaging is that um, some weeks uh, or some time down the, down the line, your trigger points will stop really radiating or um, mitigating pain out to other places in, in, in the head. And then they will simply just become sore. Um, but that, that, that doesn't mean you should stop massaging. You should stop, you shouldn't stop massaging until you can squeeze with all your force anywhere in the sternocloid mastoid. That's when you will know um, there's nothing else to, uh, to um, gain from a further massage. Um, and then of course when you massage the, the sternocloid mastoid you should always go for the best trigger points. And as I just explained, the, tr the best trigger points are the ones that are the most sore and which radiate uh, the most pain out to other places uh, in, in the head and face. All right, so how often should you treat the sternocleidomastoid? We've been over that you need to find trigger points uh, along the sternocleidomastoid and push them uh, for about 45 seconds. Um, but how frequently should you do it? Well, in, uh, in most of the literature, it's recommended that each trigger point in the sternocleidomastoid gets uh, treated eight, from uh, 8 to 12 times a day. Um, but um, it really depends on which program you are on. If you are, are on one of my um, um, tailored programs, 
uh, maybe you are following the basic head bro program which has four training sessions along the day in that case uh, the sternal cordomastoid uh, would would receive four uh, treatments per day but if you're going for a um, exclusively um, a sternocleidomastoid program where you only focus on this muscle, let's say for maybe uh, two weeks, maybe a month, um, then my recommendation really is that you should um, you, you should treat it as much as possible. So you should treat it maybe um, 20, 30 times a day. And obviously you wouldn't have scheduled sessions, but it's rather a case of whenever you uh, remember it, to simply start um, massaging it, um, going up and down like this and finding uh, all the trigger points you can find. So you can do it when you're w waiting for the bus, when you are watching TV, when you are um, even when if you're surfing online, you, you, you're only using one hand, maybe you're sitting at work, uh, maybe you're having a cup of tea with a friend. Um, basically any time where your hands are not both occupied with something else, you can really treat it. And the more you massage it, the more you treat it, the better you will feel, the faster. All right, so next we're going to talk about some uh, grips and hand positions. Uh, so it's different ways to uh, grabbing uh, sternocleidomastoids. And the first one that I would like to go through is the one called um, fingertip grip. And uh, it's the most obvious of the grips. Um, it's basically pinching your thumb and your either your index finger or your middle finger or both of them. So um, you would do like um, crossover, for example, and um, pinch like this. This is um, a rather good grip for um, the, the, the lower button of the sternocleidomastoid or the middle of it. But it's for most people, it's not the perfect choice when you get a little bit further up here. Um, you can also use this um, pinching grip on the on the on the other side, or that is the same side. So you can use it both for crossing over here, and you can use it for um, using on the same side. So when you use it on the same side, you would have to twist your hand like this, and then uh, grab the upper part of uh, of your sternocleidomastoid. Okay, so the next uh, grip is the one I called supported thumb pressure and it's really um, you put your your fingers like this uh, on top of each other and the, the, the basic idea is that your thumb presses down uh, on your index finger. So it could press down on the on the edge of, of the, on the corner of the, of the index finger here. It could press down um, here or it could even press yeah different different places here so um, you can use this uh, supported thumb uh, pressure both on the well firstly on the on the same side so the hand the same uh, the the hand will be um, uh, it will be applied to the same uh, side as, as the sternocleidomastoid that you are treating and you can apply it like like um, like this and it's important to have those fingers to lie below here uh, beneath um, because otherwise you're you're doing like this, which is very uh, it's it's it strains your index finger um, unnecessarily much. Um, so you'll get you'll be able to get more um, power um, when you do like like this. So you can use it here. You can also uh, and I'm pressing on on the corner of the of the finger here. If I want to use it um, to press here, I can also do that uh, on the sternocleidomastoid. So it would look something like this. And um, it's particularly applicable in the middle. I can even press um, all the way back here on the, on the index finger. So it will look like this. And um, it's, it's just different combinations of, of grips um, to make you um, not tire in the hand and also to make you uh, access the sternocleidomastoid in different ways. You can also use it where you cross over, like this. Um, so 
so you would do something rather similar. It might be especially um, useful for the uh, outer part of sternocleidomastoid. So that was uh, the supported thumb pressure. So the next group we're going to uh, go through is the one that I call finger pull. And uh, it essentially works like, like this. Your thumb lies in, uh, along your hand like this. And your two other fingers, the index and, the, and the, the middle finger, will pull downwards like this. So this is a grip which um, um, gives your thumb a little bit of rest because it doesn't have to work that much. So you're essentially just uh, using it to um, uh, pull, um, push downwards uh, on the tip of your, of your thumb like this. And you can use this um, grip both crossing over like this. So you will find it here and then you will have your two fingers pull like this. So like this. Um, and you can also use it on the same side, not crossing over but on the same side. doing like this. You'll have to twist your hand uh, when you do it on this side. So you cannot do it like this. You'll have to do it like this. So the next grip is called straight thumb pressure and it is essentially uh, um, where you press your thumb into the side of your neck. It can be used on multiple muscles, uh, but right now we are, we are discussing sternocleidomastoid. So this one is particularly good um, in the upper part of the sternocleidomastoid where it's more difficult to um, uh, access or to grip or grasp around it. So you would essentially um, either support your elbow, uh, elbow in, in a, on a table um, or you will just use it like this and you would push your thumb into your sternocleidomastoid. Um, it's very easy to accidentally um, uh, massage something behind the, the sternocleidomastoid. So if you are not sure you are on the sternocleidomastoid, you can try to flex and you will be able to feel that the thumb is indeed on the sternocleidomastoid like this. You can use this one um, both pressing on, on the tip of your thumb, which is more uh, relaxing for your hand, but you can also uh, just press with the, the, the palm of your thumb here, like this. But that, that, that implies you using some a little bit more strength in your, in your thumb when you do like this. Then we have another grip, which is essentially um, doing like this with your hands. And the idea is to use uh, one or a few of, of these uh, knots here. So you would put your, you would uh, lean against it. Um, this is obviously also very uh, good for the hand. It, it doesn't tire the hand nearly as much as the grips, but it's not as precise as uh, some of the other grips. This one is also especially good on the upper part of the of the sternocleidomastoid where it's more difficult to uh, get the grips. So just uh, uh, make a half a fist like this. Maybe put your elbow in uh, on a table disc and and just lean uh, against it. Again, if you're not sure you're hitting the sternocleidomastoid, just turn your head slightly so that it flexes so that you can you can feel that it actually uh, is the sternocleidomastoid that you are, uh, are treating. So some of you might wonder just how uh, smooth and how tender the sternocleidomastoid should be before you can stop massaging or before you've reached your goal. So if I just show you mine here, you can see that it's quite, um, it's quite uh, free from the underlying part of the neck and it's 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 fairly easy for me to 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 maneuver it and, and and move it around because it's very very it's very very soft here it wasn't always like that but um after many hours of of massage that's what you end up with 
Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please share it with other people who need it. For daily video updates, please like my page on Facebook, Curialistic.com, or visit my website, www.curialistic.com. If you've got any questions, please add me on Facebook, Gustav Grunsø. Thank you.